Welcome back everyone. It's time now for another instructional video from the Packet Guide Core Network Protocols. This time we're going to do a chapter on the Internet Control Message Protocol. So thanks for listening, thanks for watching. And without further ado, here we have Chapter 6. So here's the cover. It's the first book that I did in a pair for O'Reilly Publishing. I've also got some stuff happening out on their website, a webcast on masking in addition to this uh, YouTube channel. We've also got some Facebook stuff going on. Um, on this YouTube channel you may have also noticed the packet of the week. That's a fun little thing that I do where I post a packet. You guys try and figure out what it is and then I post the solution after that. So if you're curious you can take another look around and see some of the other stuff that's going on. So what is the point of the Internet Control Message Protocol? Well it turns out there are quite a few things that can go wrong on a network. And it also turns out that there are pieces of information that we sometimes need to know, things like the mask or the default gateway. And ICMP provides both of these functions, usually directed back at the host that generated the traffic. So things like which way to go to get to a de particular destination, can a destination be reached, uh, where are you in the network, and does that make a difference regarding your point of view? So can a router see something that you can't? Uh, things of that sort. These are the error messages that ICMP helps us out with. ICMP messages are often triggered by events. So, for example, when you send an ICMP echo request to some uh, node, then it responds with an ICMP echo reply. In addition, if you send a packet to a router for processing and it cannot handle that packet, then it sends you a message in response to that. So that's another triggered event. Now, ICMP is encapsulated inside the IP datagram, and the type code in the IP header is 01. Uh, there is no layer 4 protocol associated with this, so ICMP is built into layer 3. There are lots of different kinds of ICMP messages defined, but not all of them are used on today's network. So we'll see that there are a couple that are regular parts of any network, but uh, a lot of them that are no longer used. So here's the encapsulation I mentioned earlier. At the bottom there we see our local area network frame. In most cases this will be 802.11 or Ethernet. And then we uh, have IP inside that with its IP header, and the IP data field is filled with the ICMP header and the ICMP data. The first type of ICMP message that we're going to cover is actually a pair of messages, the ICMP echo request and reply. This is actually part of what's called the responder function, and so when you send an ICMP echo request to somebody, they're supposed to send you a response or a reply. Uh, it actually just sends the alphabet back and forth, which is kind of the fun part about it, uh, at least in Windows and, and in uh, Linux. Now, the easiest way to generate ICMP echoes is to use the ping program. Here's an example of what an ICMP echo request looks like. We can see the encapsulation in this particular slide, too. So we see Ethernet, then IP, and then ICMP. And at the bottom, in the hex uh, portion of the frame, you can see the alphabet going back and forth. Now again, this is a Windows capture, and so uh, routers and things like that do it a little bit differently. We can also see from here that uh, an echo request is a type 8 for ICMP code 0. I mentioned earlier that ICMP helps us with errors or problems on the network. For routers, this means that sometimes the router will not know how to get to the destination, or will know a better pathway to the destination. And so when this happens, sometimes the router can help us out by sending an error message back to the source. Let's take these situations one by one. Uh, in our first case here, when a host sends a packet to a router and that router believes that it knows a better way to get to the destination via another router, then the router can send a host a special ICMP message called a redirect. And what that redirect does is tell the host that the next time you want to talk to this particular destination, send it to the other router instead of me. So this one is a type 5 ICMP message. All right, when a redirect is to be sent, there are a couple of rules. First, the host cannot have included any source routing information in the IP packet, which means that the host cannot have specified the router to be used in forwarding this particular message. Secondly, the new router has to be on the same network as the source host in order to allow the source host to get to the new router. And lastly, the 
forwarded packet has to go out the same interface on the old router that it came in on. Whenever an ICMP error message like this one is sent, a portion of the IP packet that created or triggered the error is included in the ICMP error message so that the host knows what packet created the problem. And here's an example of our ICMP redirect. We can see that this is a type 5 and a code 1. That means that it's a redirect for a particular host, uh, meaning that the next time this particular machine, 1.1, uh, .1, wants to communicate with 2.1, it has to send it to a new gateway or router. We can also see that it looks like there are two IP headers, but there are not. It's just simply showing you that a part of the original message is encapsulated in this ICMP error message. Here's another ICMP error message. It's called the uh, time to live exceeded. And the basic problem goes like this, that looped topologies are allowed. We want redundancy. Um, we want to have failover. But if you create a logical loop, meaning that routers point back and forth to each other, or there's no way for a packet to leave a particular portion of the topology, then we have to have a way to eventually remove those packets. And so uh, every IP packet has a time to live field. And every time a packet crosses a router, that time to live field is decremented by one. When the time to live field goes down to zero, then an ICMP time exceeded message is generated. And here is our type 11 ICMP error message, time to live exceeded in transit. We can also see that because this is an error message, a portion of the original datagram that triggered this ICMP message is included in the packet. When a host sends the router a packet asking the router to forward it to the destination or to the next hop on the way to the destination, the router consults its routing table. In the event that the router doesn't know the destination directly, it sends it to its default gateway. But if after a router exhausts its routing table, it still doesn't know a pathway to the destination or a default pathway, then the router has to have a way to tell the source host that it didn't know how to get there. And so the ICMP error message, destination unreachable, is used for this purpose. And here we have our ICMP type 3 uh, error message, the destination unreachable. In this case, it's a code 1 host unreachable message. Uh, and by now you've looked at these ICMP messages and realized that they're actually pretty simple messages. They contain the type and code and then sometimes some additional pieces of information, but a fairly simple protocol. Now earlier I said that there are actually quite a few ICMP messages defined uh, and some of the messages or types have several codes associated with them. Now there are a lot that are no longer used or at least are not very common. Uh, solicitations and advertisements come to mind but depending on your environment those may be implemented. So for example in a mobile IP environment we need router advertisements and router solicitations. Now the other thing that I like to point out is that while we don't use them currently, the minute you move to IP version 6, there's an awful lot of ICMP traffic that goes on as part of what is called the neighbor discovery process. So IP version 6 sort of changes the game a little bit for ICMP. Of course then it'll be ICMP version 6. Well friends, that'll bring us to the end of another video. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening. Remember that this was a light version of the chapter. More in-depth content can be found in the Packet Guide to Core Network Protocols from O'Reilly. And as always, you can contact me directly or visit our department website. And if you're feeling particularly charitable, you can follow us on Facebook and YouTube at The Chicken Protocol. Thanks again, and may your packets always reach their destinations.